this right here is my library card and it replaces pretty much every subscription service that I might need. A library is more than just a place for books and DVD rentals and those scholarly articles for your Ben Franklin research paper back in grade school. It's actually a really interesting place with a lot of different things to offer. And I think it's super useful for people that, how do I put it, want to cut the cord on all these subscription services that are just eating away at our pockets. I didn't discover the library until long after school. It was actually after college. The only time I went to one is for school projects or on occasion with the family as a kid. And I spent my entire life overlooking them until I eventually stopped overlooking them. And that day came quickly after college when I was pretty like isolated at home and needed something to do. So I started going to coffee shops and I realized if you're spending like three to six dollars a day on coffee, that cost adds up and you can't really spend that long in a coffee shop every day. And it's just, what do I do? And I discovered, hey, maybe I should start going to the library. And so I went to the library. I eventually signed up for a library card, started signing up books and DVDs like any one else, but then I wanted to actually look into what can I actually do with my library card? So the first thing that I discovered very, very quickly was the audiobooks and ebooks that I could sign out. I've always had YouTube videos or podcasts on in the background as I'm making dinner, cleaning dishes, or doing some sort of work. And I realized that my library had a service very similar to Audible, but at the time it was called Overdrive. And Overdrive allowed me to sign out pretty much as many audiobooks as I could possibly want at any given time for free. While you can learn from YouTube videos like this, I guess, or podcasts, I feel like there's something about a book, the curation that the author needs to go through, the vetting process is at a tier significantly higher than what a YouTube video or a podcast needs to go through. So if I'm trying to get really good information about a certain subject, I would much rather get that from the book. But the thing is we may not have eight hours a day to sit with the book, but if I'm listening to let's say 20 hours of podcasts and videos a week, I could get two and a half books a week at that pace. I accumulated a lot of knowledge from really curated sources of great nonfiction books. And what I would do is I would save all that information on a note card. I would just jot down some high level notes that I'd take away from each book and file them away just to have a reminder of those books. All you have to do is get a library card, download the app, put in your library card and your county in it, and you're good to go. They don't need your email. They don't need anything. It's all through uh, this library card. It's pretty neat. Number two on my list is movies and TV shows, but it's more specifically great movies. Netflix is something I don't use anymore. We all have a bunch of different reasons on why we might not use Netflix. They don't have everything you want anymore. And of course, you have to subscribe to Hulu, Netflix, HBO, Amazon. And they kind of fill these streaming platforms with garbage, kind of like zombifying our brain because we're not even getting good entertainment anymore. We're just getting flash in the pan original series from Netflix and it's just junk food. What I'm trying to say is the selections are lame on most streaming services. This is where Canopy comes in. One cool thing about Canopy is they have the Criterion Collection on the streaming service or at least many films from the Criterion Collection. It's essentially an aggregator and preservation company of great films. And the classification is these are the great films of our times, of our history, and these films deserve to be preserved and distributed. One thing about Disney, for example, who bought 20th Century Fox, is they have all these licenses to old films that they're just keeping in a vault and they're just gonna kill off, which is really sad to us movie lovers because all of these studios are being bought up and the old catalogs are being put away in favor of new catalogs. And over time, movies are getting lost. The Criterion Collection is absolutely incredible and Canopy has a lot of their films on there. To me, if you're a movie lover, like, like a great film movie lover, there's no better streaming service than Canopy. It's free with your library card. If I was somebody consuming news every day, I would rather get my news from published sources rather than social media, Reddit, Twitter, whatnot. An the argument here goes back to what I said about books versus podcasts. There's a certain level of dedication and due process that good publication has that I would 
rather consume it that way. I looked around different libraries in my area and different libraries have different news and magazine streaming services. But Press Reader, for example, is a library sponsored news aggregation source that allows you to subscribe to tens of thousands of different newspapers from around the world. Not every library that I've seen has this, but even my local library in my hometown has some sort of new subscription service where you could get the local county times digital version of the newspaper for absolutely free. If you're a magazine reader, which I don't know how many of us really are these days, but there's a magazine subscription service called Flipster. Again, through the library, you get that for the library card. So, so far we've covered audiobooks and eBooks, movies, TV shows, news. What are we missing? Oh, music. Surely the library cannot replace how you consume music. I mean, I guess gone are the days of taking CDs and burning them onto a disc and uploading them to your iPod like we used to do in the early 2000s. Admittedly, I didn't believe that a library could replicate or reproduce a viable alternative. You could subscribe to your library's streaming service. And that's called Free Goal Music. Free Goal Music allows you to stream tens of millions of songs. If you're somebody that wants an alternative to Spotify and Apple Music and YouTube Music and you don't want to pay for your music, you can get it free from your library, and that's freaking crazy. One thing that most libraries have is some sort of museum pass system where you could sign up museum passes for a certain day with you and a guest going. And it's really actually incredible. Another thing I saw and I just had to like look more into was a seed garden. You can literally get seeds from your local library and they have a resource center. There's a community of gardeners, I guess, that aggregate at the library and exchange seeds and whatnot. Another thing you can use your library for is to sign out items, like different items, large checkerboards or tools. They have professional notary services for free, book a room. You could have meeting rooms or study rooms. And of course, there's just things to do, whether it's a book club or a writing club. You see, there's this concept called the third place. It's the place between home, work and school that people aggregate or go to to spend time in their community. Unity. And in today's world where budgets are running thinner than they've ever been, running out of those opportunities in order to have a third place. An example of a third place might be a bar or a bar or a... And if we really stretch our minds, you could add movie theaters and pool halls and bowling and the mall. But all of these things cost money. And it might be easy to blame suburbanization or the pandemic for keeping people isolated from other people. I'm not here for that sort of debate right now. I'm just here to say that we're running thin on places for people to go outside of the home. And this is where libraries can come in. 